Right guys, and welcome to the channel. I'm back in Skipwith Common National Nature Reserve, a couple of miles to the east of Selby in North Yorkshire. I was here a few weeks ago, if you remember, doing a, a walk that took me around the periphery of the reserve, about five or six kilometres, maybe more, a couple of hours walk. And at the moment I make all my videos, all the content for this site on my phone and unfortunately I got as far as this on the walk and the battery went flat <laughs> so I said I'd be back and here I am instead a couple of weeks holiday in Scotland so I couldn't come before now it's mid-October it rained for about 12 hours it's only just stopped at about nine o'clock so everything's absolutely soaking but it's quite still so I'll take you through this part of the woodland to the car park where I started from at the eastern side of the reserve if you watched the first video you'll have heard me mention that this was the home of RAF recall in World War II and there are still signs of its past the little buildings we've just walked past I think are some old storehouses and a little bit further through this woodland we, we come to some old runways So join me as I say on this beautiful, well, I was going to say morning but it's early afternoon now. As autumn slowly tightens its grip on the north of England. I started today from the western side of the reserve which has led me to the southern edge and I've followed that I've reached an area of runways now I'll head back into the centre of the reserve I, I think there were two runways but from what I can see but I'm not 100% sure 
and I hope it's not going to stay uh, but it has started raining again first time in about three and a half hours I thought I was going to be uh, lucky see how heavy it gets put the video in may become a little bit more intermittent but as you can see um, well I was going to say clearly but if it's not I'm walking down the centre of a World War Two runway and I'm guessing a lot of this vegetation, probably most of it, wouldn't have been here. If you look on the left the, and the area we've just walked through, the predominant species is silver birch, which I was once told is called the pioneer species. Because one of the areas left to go wild, it's one of the first trees to colonise an area. I think it provides cover for animals and lets longer lived species of tree um, establish. I think the other runway runs parallel to this one. I'm probably completely wrong, but I just get a feeling that there were two runways. If you do know more about the history of the place than I do, let me know in the comments whether it had the one or two runways quite a large area of, of runway here uh, and at the end where they've done a little bit of earthworks to stop vehicles accessing it it's a little bit of the archaeology of the place visible rain seems to have eased off But it's certainly a damp old <laughs> day. Every tree you walk past, you get a good old shower. So I'm back here at the the main road that, not quite a main road, but the main track that runs through the reserve. goes from the west carry on that way you'd come to Brayton and Selby and this way in a straight line would just take you back to the car park I just we're actually going that way, but I'll make a quick um, detour up here. There's a really pleasant wildlife pool that I discovered by accident last time I was here. 
but then we'll return and head back down the track because we're going to an area called the Bombay Loop which is what it says a little circular walk that goes past the old Bombays Skipworth National Nature Reserve flagship ponds. I think I told you this in the last video. Skipworth National Nature Reserve is one of the last remaining areas of northern lowland heath in England. The 270 hectare, uh, hectares of open heath, ponds, mire, fen, reed bed, woodland and scrub are part of an ancient landscape with their roots in prehistory. Skipworth has been identified as a flagship pond site by the Freshwater Habitats Trust because of its exceptionally important because of its exceptional importance for freshwater biodiversity. This fantastic reserve with its numerous ponds and pools, many probably originating as peat cuttings, sand pits and flax retting pits supports several of Britain's most endangered freshwater plants and animals. The pond mud snail, great crested newt and an aquatic fern called pillwort. The pond in front of you was excavated in the late 20th century in one of the World War II runway embayments. It has changed considerably during the past 25 years. Work to remove shading and remove silt has taken place to encourage generation, regeneration of pillwork and to create ideal conditions for its range of special wildlife to thrive. Careful on wooden boarding. We'll head back towards the Bombays. I'm going to stop reporting on whether it's raining or not, because it seems to be raining all the time now. The video might be a little shaky because I bought myself a, a gimbal, a handheld device that makes filming really smooth I've discovered and it's useful when you're actually out walking but I think it looks quite a delicate electronic device so I'll have to put it away put my phone's cover back on and revert to this old-fashioned way Anyway, that was the pond. I actually walked this way coming out to get to the place where I wanted to start the walk today. And two strange things happened. 
One, I was passed by a car, which I wondered where it was going. But I can now see it's gone to the little Bombay loop. And the other was, there was a, an owl hooting away. It only sounded as if it was 20, 30 feet away from me. But I couldn't see it for the life of me. But you never know who's looking out at you when you're in places like this. Who are what? The sign says pretty much what the other one did, except that today long on cattle, Hebridean sheep and Exmoor ponies wander across the site, helping to keep the common open with a wide range of habitats, which provide suitable spaces, suitable places for woodcock, tree pipit, woodlark and occasional night jars. During the Second World War, the Common was an airfield used to train pilots to fly bombing missions over Europe. Today, the old runways and bomb storage areas are still visible, although now they provide a home to the Common's wildlife, such as lizards and grass snakes. In memory of men and women of the armed services who were stationed on Skipwith Common and RAF Recall during World War II. Also of those who built the aerodrome, helping to shape the landscape, access and wildlife of the site we enjoy today. This memorial was dedicated by the chaplain of the Yorkshire Air Museum and Allied Forces Memorial on the 14th of May 2010 as part of the National Nature Reserve Declaration Celebrations. The propeller was kindly donated to Ashcrick Park Estate and Natural England by the Yorkshire Air Museum. The Plants and Animals of Skipwith Common National Nature Reserve. The 
the story through the ages. And this is the little loop that goes by the old Bombay's. Of which these are the or what remains of them. I read somewhere that in the summer the adder snake likes to bask on the banks in the sunlight on an early morning. The UK's only venomous snake I think incidents are rare. I think it's usually people who don't have sensible footwear might step on them. Or if you sit down and put your hands down. But both are easily avoided, really. As long as you're aware that there might be venomous snakes in the area. Time for a cup of tea, I think. Not sure what these hooks are for. They go all along the, the wall. Both sides of where I'm sitting. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. Not a bad spot for a cup of tea. So I'm at the top of the loop really now, about to start heading back, but just before we do there's a, a series of boardwalks that take you right out into the heathland. Which is often dry, uh, but I imagine in real heavy heavy rain the whole area will be underwater
the fern that we saw at the nature reserve Askham Bog at York if you saw that video I can't quite remember its name is it the King of Ferns or the Emperor Fern uh, I'll, I'll put the name of it up on the screen after but it's enormous it's little enclosure is about two meters by two meters and it it stands almost two meters high It's not a very long boardwalk. Which brings you out to a little little viewpoint. among the trees and another pond It's gorgeous, isn't it? it? Really is. We're about four miles from the centre of Selba here. A couple of miles from the M62. mile or so from the A19 
see if I can get back on here without having a serious mishap. I'll continue around the loop now and then I pick up the main path back to the car park. A lovely day for fungus. Some bracket fungus. They attach themselves to dead or dying trees. Once again, back at the the track that runs through the the centre of the of the reserve. The bracken's gone over. Always fills me with such a thrill when I see those first fronds and that beautiful fresh green coming through in the spring. How's that for a tree? Yeah, bonsai people would work for a lifetime, wouldn't they? To make something as beautiful as that. The rain seems to have finally passed over at the same time as the, the wind seems to have got up. It's much fresher now. A 
on the last leg now, just down the track straight ahead of us. Uh, takes us back to the car park. But uh, just up there, straight ahead of us, not left, straight on. But I like to just step to the right and walk back this last leg on the side of the Heathland. It does make me sad to see the bracken going over and autumn and winter of their attractions but for me nothing ever beats the excitement and sheer speed which spring seems to come upon us and then the vibrance and long days of wind of and the vibrance and long dreamy days of summer. So I'm almost back at the car park now, having completed finally the full circuit of the reserve. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and like the video. If you'd like to, please consider some subscribing and if you can do join me next time for more of the same probably until then I'll say cheerio